Mike's rough ride. The engines felt sorry for Mike. Mike was feeling poorly, and so Freddy had to take him to the works. He was coupled to Mike, and then Freddy puffed away to take Mike to the works to get him up and running again. Soon the Fat Controller arrived to see the three engines. Since Mike is feeling poorly at the works, I want someone to do his work for me. Any volunteers? Me, said Peter Sam. I'll do his jobs. I'll help him anyway. Very good, said the Fat Controller. I hope you do well. Sure, said Peter Sam. That's a good engine, said the Fat Controller. And the Fat Controller walked away. At last, Peter Sam got out of the sheds. Take care of Mike's jobs, said Bertram and Duke. Oh, I will, said Peter Sam. I'll be back before you know it. Good luck. And then Peter Sam puffed away. Soon Peter Sam was taking care of Mike's jobs. He also took care of Mike's goods train. And then he took care of Mike's passengers as well, where he got Mike's coat where he got Mike's coaches from. Then, the, then Toby was delighted to see Peter Sam again, but felt sorry for Mike. I hope Mike will feel better soon, said Toby. I hope you're taking care of his, taking care of his passengers. Oh, I will do, said Peter Sam. I hope you'll be back. Me too, said Toby. And with that, Peter Sam popped down to the station to take care of Mike's coaches. A few days later, Mike was finally back from the works and felt better and was up and running again. Peter Sam was at a siding, nodding off. He was feeling very tired after doing Mike's jobs. Thank you for doing my jobs, Peter Sam, said Mike. I must go now. Good luck. And then Mike puffed away. Peter Sam said nothing and went to sleep forever. Until meanwhile, Mike had to take some trucks to the docks. He was coupled to them at last. And then, Mike was coupled to the trucks and was on his way, but he also had left his driver behind. Stop! shouted the driver, but Mike had already left. And soon Mike was all on his own without his driver. He began racing down the line. This is fun, he thought, as he hurried along the line. He went up a steep hill and was still carrying on doing his work. Suddenly he was going faster and faster. The rails were slippery and the trucks were pushing him too hard. On, 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 they cried. Help, help, cried Mike. He realised that he had no driver. I can't stop, I can't stop, he shouted. He had already raced through a tunnel and funded Thundered passed by the station. The station master was in shock. Soon he telephoned for help. And poor Mike was still on the run. He began racing down the line too many times. Help! He screamed. Somebody stop me! He shouted. He also raced past by the entry sheds where Bertram and Duke were resting in. What's going on? Said, said Bertram. I don't know, said Duke. Maybe Mike's becoming a runaway. And he was right. Poor Mike couldn't stop. What should I do? What should I do? He, he said sadly. Poor Mike couldn't stop. He realised he was heading for the next station. I'm heading for the station. He groaned. Look out! He thought someone was at the line. But there wasn't. Luckily, his driver had made it to the other station. His driver jumped on board Mike, and at last, he slammed on Mike's brakes, and then Mike slowed down into the next station, just in time. Mike felt exhausted. <sighs> he, he groaned, them trucks were troublesome, and I have managed to stop. Mike felt exhausted. Don't worry, said his driver and fireman. We've stopped you now. At last, the fat controller went to congratulate Mike. Well done, Mike, he said. You've prevented a rough ride and you have now given a special award. 
From now on, you shall have a fresh coat of paint. Thank you, sir, said Mike. It will be lovely not to get dusty and filthy again, he said, and Mike smiled with joy.